Thank you for joining us for the Orange County Arts Council's virtual studio visit. This program is made possible by donations from people like you. 50% of donations go directly to the artists featured and 50% to Orange County Arts Council programs. Please consider donating today. You can donate by going to ocartscouncil.org. The Arts Council's virtual studio visits are presented in partnership with the Newburgh Free Library and are made possible in part by NISCA, the New York State Council on the Arts. Okay, so let's get started. Heidi Lenino, figurative abstract artist. She lives in Warwick, like me, and I have known Heidi for probably over 25 years. We both went to Pratt um, and we have, we've raised our kids together. We raised, well, I mean, like we, our families are close. And um, I think like we moved here similar times, uh, you know, in, hoping for like an artistic life, creative life together. And I think that we have had a very rich experience. And I, I think I might be biggest, Heidi's biggest fan, except maybe her husband might be her other biggest fan. Um, just, you know, when I met her, I just, she's just a fantastic person. And just to be able to share her with all of you today just brings me such joy. Well, hello and thank you. Um, that was really sweet. Janet and I, um, like like she said, have been friends for such a long time. I'm actually older than Janet, so I didn't know her really at Pratt. I had just graduated when she started. So um, we both really come from a really similar artistic background and really um, inspired by New York City during that time, which was really exciting, dangerous, but really exciting time. And I absolutely loved going to Pratt in the late 80s, uh, early 90s. So um, that was really great. So Janet and I, like everyone else knows, when you go to art school, you share something really significant with that person and the people that you went to school with. So it's an unspoken language that we share. And um, I really love that. And I love that Janet's part of that. And um, thank you. Um, I was actually a drawing major. Janet was talking about um, my drawing and mark making. And at Pratt, I was a drawing major. So I still um, kind of always explain my, my studio is here. Um, that I really approach all of my mediums. Like I'm very attracted to different materials and mediums and the texture of things. But I always say that I draw, like whether it's on paper, canvas, clay, wood, metal, I'm always approaching the material through drawing um, and using line in kind of the same way on different pieces. Like I'm always thinking three dimensionally. So I'm either drawing a line or cutting a line or um, sculpting or painting a line. It's a gestural movement stroke. So, um, I mean, that's a little bit about uh, just my process. Um, basically my work is about movement and gestural and figurative abstraction. Yeah, I see how that, it translates the line through the various mediums you do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's always the same, um, I guess, uh, like some people always ask like, what's your favorite material? And I always say it's charcoal for me. Um, I, I just love the, I love the sound. I love the texture. I like the feeling of it on paper. I love the, um, the messiness of it, the ability to erase and then rebuild and then layer and rebuild. Um, all of that's really part of um, the way I begin a piece. I probably begin every piece with charcoal. Mm. Wow, that's cool. Um, even, I mean, do you start your sculptures with a drawing as well? Do you think you- um, It matters the sculpture. Um, I, I have sculptures in wood, paper, um, clay, and metal. Um, I would say the paper and wood, I, I actually work a lot intuitively. Like I always say that I love the way the Dadaists think, um, the way that they kind of work um, 
in the method of chance and the possibility of putting things together and then seeing what happens. So I would say when I work with a more malleable material like paper and um, even clay and the and wood, I actually just draw and then I put one piece with another piece and then I fold it and I cut it. I just kind of let the process and the material lead me into the end result of the piece. But with my metal pieces, they're a bit more orchestrated. Like the paper, um, I call them maquettes. I have a lot of them around the studio. I play with them on the floor. Um, I'll move you around the studio a little bit. But once I find a design and a construction and composition of a paper sculpture, I will then work on it on the computer and there'll be a template and I'll plan to make it, especially if it's large, because I'll work with the fabricator. So that's completely planned and figured out unless again, I'm using a piece of metal and I'm just doing it by chance and I'm kind of drawing the line while cutting it. So um, I play in both areas that I work really um, intuitively and allow the material to predict the outcome or I really plan it when I have to work with the fabricator. Mm. That sounds like a bounce. <laughs> so what, do you want to, um, what are you excited about either in the studio or out of the studio? You know, I mean, um, yeah, I, I guess excited about, I guess, um, I guess I'm always excited about the possibility of, um, creating something. I like making things. So I think I'm not really excited about something. I'm excited about process. I'm always addicted to process. Um, like I'll, I'll be working on something and then I start thinking about three other things. Like I just love the process of things. And I'm lucky that I have a big studio. So I'm able to work in a lot of different mediums that I wouldn't um, be able to um, in a smaller studio. Like when I, ha I have a small studio at home and I tend to do a lot of my clay work there and my ceramics. And everything else I bring to the larger studio because I'm, I'm based in Tuxedo Park is where I am right now. Um, I can move you around the studio. You, you let me know whenever you want to do that. Um, obviously, I have a lot of painting. I guess painting and drawing is um, really probably the, the bulk of, of my work. Um, right, tell us a little bit more about your studio. Like, how big is your studio? And um, um, I, I think it's about 1,600 square feet. I Right now, I, I can move you around a little bit if that's good. I have my roll gate closed. My roll gate does go out to, um, I have a pretty big hallway which is really great for sculptors. Um, I have a really big, oops, the lights aren't on right now, but I have a really big space here that I have a lot of installations that I leave out here, but it's a really big space, which is really helpful and convenient when you need to ship work or pick work up for a show. Um, but this is my studio, so that's the roll gate. I'm lucky I can open it up. And um, especially in the summer when it's warm and there's a lot of light. But um, I have a lot of little sculptures here. I'm working on some collage pieces on the floor. I work on the floor, on the wall, on my easels. I kind of move around a lot. I'm gonna actually move these right now. My own way. Uh, there we go. So I, like I said, is that I tend to move around the studio a lot. I have, um, I work on smaller pieces here. I call them maquettes. They're just little sketches in paper and they could be realized in wood, metal, clay. Um, they're just all sketches of three dimension. These are some paintings that are actually for um, my art rep that I'm working on right now um, in placement. And she uh, is putting out a catalog soon of my work. So a lot of the studio is kind of full of a lot of inventory, I guess you would say. Mm -hmm. um, this is a wall, kind of an active wall, where I just like to put a lot of my ideas. This is from a series called Folded Females, which I continue to work on. Um, I work on it in paper. I work on it in wood. This piece I just, I have to actually ship. It's a wood sculpture that just got placed. Um, here's some other pieces in metal. I'm seeing if you can see them. There's some sculptures in metal and a lot of sketches on the wall. And again, it's from a series called Folded Females that I started, um, I started a couple of years ago. And um, I continue to work on paper and 
really continue to uh, focus on that theme. And it's a real, it, it's a way of, um, it, it's my kind of self-portrait for universal female of just explaining life and um, the vulnerability and strength in the female form. So these are some drawings. I call these, um, they, these are called drawing from the inside out. I actually start them with my eyes closed with charcoal and both hands. And then I start finding the form and developing the figurative piece. Um, I also use a reed in the other room. I use a reed a lot with charcoal extended on it and to get the gestural stroke of your body. So my work's about movement and I'm always moving when I'm working. So I'm, I'm moving a lot when I work. Is it the I intention have, that, um, is, it it the is it the intention that there is, uh, that you, to be a figurative piece when you start this with your eyes closed? Oh yeah, yeah, it's drawing from the inside out. So it is uh, from a female form. It's drawing the emotional gesture as opposed to drawing from the live model. I, I do both, I draw, draw from the live model, but then I also reflect and use that, um, I guess it's knowledge. Um, the more you draw from the figure, the more you own it, and then you can use it and pull from it from when you need it. So it's really closing your eyes and um, finding that form on the paper and allowing the gestural strokes. And, th and then obviously I open my eyes and work on the piece, but it's a lot of erasing and redrawing and layering. To see more clips from the studio visit, follow us on YouTube.